Good morning. It's Wednesday, September 25th. I'm Elizabeth Hasselbeck. He's still going. You are looking at Senator Ted Cruz live on the Senate floor, where he has been speaking for 15 hours. So what's his point? And what's going to come out of all this? We're going to break it down for you today. This little lady was finding his notes, so they sat there awkwardly on the stage. But Bono was good on stage. I so you saw that he <laughs> took right. over for a second. I thought that that was great. You know, he's used to performing. He's used to get in a crowd right. excited about something well, before it happens or not. But see, he needed notes. Ted Cruz, who is still talking, live in our nation's capital. He's into the, the 15th hour. He's been talking nonstop, eviscerating Obamacare, talking about all sorts of stuff. It started yesterday at 2.41 in the afternoon. It is technically not a filibuster. Rather, it's modeled on an old-fashioned speech because around noon, he's going to get uh, the carpet jerked out from underneath of him, and Harry Reid's going to have a vote on this thing. Exactly. There's a, there's a finite point here that we're right. actually going to get time. to. He can't just keep going for days and days and days. Uh, you know, he said a lot when you talk for this long. He actually took <laughs> questions for a while around 11 o'clock. I said Senator Dick, Dick Durbin showed up, started uh, uh, throwing some questions at him. Uh, here's a little of, uh, of how he got some help from some of his friends. He has now beat, by the way, Rand Paul's uh, record this year of consecutive hours talking. So he's probably going uh, to tap out at about 12. So here is a little about what he said last night. They want to make this about a battle of this senator versus that senator, this person versus that person. This fight is not about personalities. Look, most Americans could not give a flying flip about a bunch of politicians in Washington. Who cares? You know, almost all of us are in cheap suits with bad haircuts. Who cares? Senators don't always ask for advice from other senators, but I thought I'd come down and, like, you know, make sure you had comfortable shoes on, make sure you're getting enough to eat, try not to eat on television. That's a little bit of free advice that sometimes shows up. But my question really relates to Obamacare, and I think you've done a good job of bringing attention to something that I think is going to be a real tragedy for the country. Green Eggs and Ham was my favorite book when I was a little boy. And so he would make me green eggs and ham. You can actually do it. The food coloring is a little bit cheating. But if you actually take something like spinach and mix it into the eggs, the eggs turn green. And I'd note Congressman Amash has the unique distinction of joining you and me and Senator Paul in the description of being, I believe the term was, wacko birds, uh, which I, for one, I'm not sure which particular avian species to which that refers. But whichever one, if it is, if it reflects a fidelity to the Constitution, a fidelity to liberty, and a willingness to fight to defend the principles this country was founded on, then I, and I believe I can speak for you and Rand and Congressman Amash, and I think of quite a few others of us, are very, very proud wacko birds. Redneck rule number one, most things can be fixed with duct tape extension cords. You know, it's now late at night. I'm going to venture to say most members of the United States Senate are home in bed asleep, while America lives the nightmare. They're just a little of uh, his 15 hours plus. It looks like he's probably going to stretch past 20 hours before it's all done. That's right. he, was, he was talking about how we, they were going into the night. Uh, at home at his house in Texas, his two young daughters were actually watching Dad there on C-SPAN 2 and on the Fox News channel occasionally. And so what did he do? He read them Green Eggs and Ham directly out of the Dr. Seuss book. That was one of my favorite moments. Now, st strategically, you can agree or, or not with what he's doing in terms of, of this bill. But I do think that there, this is one of my two favorite moments when he decided to just get real and read the bedtime story. I mean, what an opportunity to have and be able to reach out not only to the American people as, as every man, but your own daughters. And then sure. secondly, he also had, there was yeah, a yeah. hashtag on Twitter, defund Obamacare because, and it was trending. And I... That was going wild. I mean, it was like spitfire all over Twitter. And he brought the American people right onto the floor, and he, he read their tweets. And I thought those two moves right there actually show you someone who cares and is, has a thumb on the pulse of Americans out there right now. Good point. All right, so the House passes uh, this uh, funding bill. It goes to the Senate. Uh, it does not fund Obamacare. The Senate's uh, about 12 o'clock today going to put the funding back in Obamacare, then kick it back to the House, at which time it's game on for the House again. Meanwhile, there is one senator from Connecticut, who, where you live, uh, uh, Elizabeth, who's complaining about the hours. 
Yes. Right. Yeah. He, had, he had to put in log in some extra extra hours. Yeah, right? he tweeted. Yeah, he tweeted in there too. It, it wasn't under the hashtag though that I mentioned before. Uh, he said walking into Capitol to take 11 and one shift, presiding over the Senate for this pointless fairy tale non filibuster. Well, is it pointless? I, I mean, he is uh, making a point. It, and keep in mind, he's only been in the U.S. Senate for about nine months, but he is a poster uh, boy for a lot on the hard right who believe that, you know, we need a, a take-no-prisoners kind of guy or gal in there. Speaking of gal, Sarah Palin weighed in on Mr. Cruz and Cruz control of Capitol Hill. Here, he is, here she is last night with Hannity. Ted Cruz loves his countrymen, and he does not want to see us destroyed by bad, selfish policy, so he fights for what is right. And yet the naysayers, Sean, are telling us that this is a lost cause, fighting for what's right, fighting against a program that's so bad that Congress itself exempted itself out of. I don't know if you saw Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Mark Levin reminded his listeners of this today. In that, in that movie, when, Jim, when Jimmy Stewart's character said, a lost cause during his own filibuster, his character, he said a lost cause is the only one that's actually worth fighting for because a, a lost cause, the only reason you would fight for such a thing is for one reason, one plain simple reason, and that is love thy neighbor. Here's the thing. Number one, I got to go to Alaska. That looks beautiful in that mm -hmm. backdrop. Number two, I like Mark Levin. I listen to him almost every day. Sure. But I think the word is movie, the Jimmy Stewart movie. This, to me, I think that tactically, this is a good move in spirit, but it, you don't have the numbers. There's not enough time left to work it out. There's not enough sentiment on the other side to get the numbers up. You could want as much as you, as you wish. You could be on the right side of this issue, but is now's not the time. You got till October 1st to work something out. So at noon, he's going to be knocked out, at which time it's going to go back to the House, and at which time the, the, the House will hopefully have enough time to say, okay, Get out the personal mandate. Get that, strip that out. They're going to have to strip that out, get it back to the Senate all before October 1st, before the government stops. My feeling is, overall, is this thing is a disaster. There's been 19 different waivers. They can't implement it. The states are panicking. The doctors are panicking. They can't the even Cleveland, get the website moving they, on The it, Cleveland right? Clinic can't work it out. They're laying off thousands of people. Let the bill stand on its current merits fall apart on its current merits, and then try to repair it. And this thing called an election will give you an opportunity to fix it the right way. Well, you know, the way Sarah Palin has played it out there, you know, she does make sense. You know, you can say, well, the, the numbers just aren't there. But at the same time, you look at the number of people in the United States who are squarely against it. It's not just Republicans. It's Democrats. It's unions. Not in the it's, House. It, it's, not members, in it, it's members of the president's own party who don't like it. And so uh, it, it looks like, and keep in mind, uh, there were some closed door meetings yesterday, according to the Washington Post, where uh, people politely spoke to Mr. Cruz about what he wanted to do. Uh, and they explained how, you know, this is really going to complicate things. Keep in mind, when the government shut down back in 1995 and 1996, the Republican Party was squarely blamed. Mm. We don't want to get tagged with that again. Nonetheless, he said he would like to stretch the debate into the weekend until he's no longer able to stand. Who he, is, however, I, will only be able to speak until noon, and then Harry Reid's going to take the vote. Yeah, strategically, I mean, I, I think many people are in the camp that say, look, this o Obamacare has one person's name on it. If everything goes down, that one person's name is attached, and the sure. buck must stop there. Right. Anything running interference right now is only going to... Uh, account for shared blame down the road, right? And that's a dangerous thing. Right. I just right. don't know one Democrat. Max Parker says it's a train wreck, but he's not voting against it. Other people might whisper things behind closed doors. But when it comes to standing on the Senate floor, not one Democrat stands against it. Not even Joe Manchin stands against it. And he's the one guy with no relationship with the White House who actually can speak his mind and is outraged by his energy problem. Well, there, not one. There are four Democrats who are running for re-election who are in trouble. And, you know, if it were a close vote, you would have to watch to see whether or not they would go ahead and jump over. So the, the backup plan on the House side is, okay, let's say uh, they're able to go ahead and pass the stripped down version of their bill, kick it back to them with no... Uh, with, uh, with funding for Obamacare. Yeah, exactly. exactly. The defunding missing, it looks as if what they would plan to do is then attach a one-year delay of the individual mandate. But that surely would automatically trigger 
a government shutdown. Because? because the Democrats, none of them, would go on yeah. record. They'll go back and sit and they'll say, no, I, I'm not for that delay, even though it works to the benefit of the program to delay it a year because it, it is not ready for prime time. Yeah. We actually have a quick look here of uh, Marco Rubio, Senator from Florida. He's Speaking part of right the fun. Now. He's He's I'm right there, taking it all. We're, we're going to be speaking with him later. I'm out my credit card. I'm going to take out my life savings. And I'm going to open the small business because I believe in my idea. And I will guarantee you that for most people who did that, those first years were tough. This idea that you open up a business and tomorrow you're Facebook, you know. Okay, so. I thought our show was long. He's going to be joining us a little later on. Uh, email us right now. Uh, what do you think about what Ted Cruz and company are doing on Capitol Hill? Is it a lost cause or is it a just cause? Or what's the cause for it? Email us friends at foxnews.com or you can Twitter us at Fox and Friends. Can Ted Cruz, Heather, now uh, sleep while uh, Senator Rubio asks him a question? You know, I'm just glad to know that somebody else is working overnight. Yeah. You know, right. Washington, let's keep them working. We're paying them a lot of money. There right? you go. <laughs> okay. Got some quick headlines to bring.